All right, guys, this is video lecture number two for my zoology classes. Today, we're going to be talking about mass extinctions, and towards the end, I'm also going to talk a little bit about orientation, since it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, we talked about extinction events a couple weeks ago, and there were a few questions about them on your test, and I want to kind of recover a couple things and talk a little more in-depthly about what a mass extinction really is and the five major ones that we've had. Let me start off and give you... Um, a little bit of the history of the major mass extinctions we've had. There have been five. Um, if you're taking notes down on this, I would highly recommend you write down the names of these five. Um, they all have abbreviations, and I'll give you the abbreviations for them. Um, but when I quiz you, it'll be over whatever the names are. So, the first really recorded mass extinction that we um, classify as being a mass extinction is known as the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction, also known as the OS mass extinction event, um, happened roughly 450 million years ago. Now, at this time on LERF, on LERF, that's just for you, fifth period, at this time period on Earth, most animals were combined to being marine-based life. Um, all life that existed on land or that was terrestrial was either very early plant life, such as ferns. Um, there might have been some very, very, very early amphibians. Um, at that point in time. Amphibians really didn't truly evolve until around 400 million years ago, but there might have been some early ones there. Terrestrial life was mainly prokaryotic organisms and ferns at that time. So the OS extinction event really gave rise to the terrestrial eukaryote. And after the OS extinction event, amphibians and reptiles came from marine-based life and occupied the niches that were created by eukaryotic plant life on terrestrial land. So OS extinction event, 450 million years ago, very important for terrestrial evolution, okay? Um, it was not the largest mass extinction event we've had. I believe it's said that only about 70 to 80 percent, yeah, around 75 percent of all species went extinct during the OS extinction event. So not a huge mass extinction, but that's still a pretty large number. The next mass extinction event that we will talk about is known as the Late Devonian mass extinction. It is the smallest mass extinction we recognize, and it also occurred over the longest period of time. The Late Devonian extinction happened somewhere between 400 and 350 million years ago. Only about 50 to 60 percent of life on Earth was wiped out, and uh, it occurred over the period of 20 million years, which is very long for an extinction. Uh, most extinctions take a while to occur, but not quite that long. They'll usually maybe take a million years or so to run their course and then they're done. If it's a mass extinction due to a natural disaster, the natural disaster will wipe out a large portion of life on the planet, and then the after effects of that will wipe out the rest of the life on the planet for the following decades and centuries. But the late Devonian mass extinction happened because of climate change, and so it took several million years for it to completely occur. Um, it is also known as the late D mass extinction of it. So the late D mass extinction, 400 to 350 million years ago, not very large, um, lasted for 20 million years. The next one we need to talk about, which uh, you were asked a question about this one on your test, is the Permian Triassic mass extinction event. This is the largest mass extinction event to have ever occurred on the planet. Um, happened 251 million years ago. Uh, roughly 97% of all life on the planet was wiped out at this time. It's theorized that it was a supervolcano that caused this mass extinction, um, but we don't really know for sure. Um, it was at this point in time that all large amphibians, all large reptiles, a lot of marine life was wiped out and caused the um, age of reptiles, what we would like to call it. Um, this is when the dinosaurs really truly evolved. And now dinosaurs are not true reptiles. Um, we now know that dinosaurs are what are called mesotherms. Um, all a mesotherm is is that you're somewhere in between an endotherm and an ectotherm. So endotherms like us are warm-blooded. Ectotherms like reptiles are cold-blooded. We now know dinosaurs were somewhere in between and were their own complete group. So calling the period of life after the Permian extinction, the age of reptiles is slightly inaccurate. Uh, it's really more so the age of dinosaurs. Um, but it happened 250 million years ago. It's known as the Permian extinction, okay? Um, wiped out 90% of all life on the planet. 
The next one is one most of you are most likely not going to be familiar with. We did not talk about it in class. It's known as the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, or the TRJ extinction event. It happened around 200 million years ago, and this is the mass extinction event that wiped out most of the large dinosaurs. Um, so you've kind of probably heard that, you know, the Tyrannosaurus Rex and like, the Stegosaurus never really existed together, or maybe the Velociraptor didn't exist with dinosaurs that you watched in Jurassic Park. Um, it's because of this extinction event. More of the larger predatory dinosaurs, or even the very, very, very large herbivores that lived at this time, were wiped out by this extinction event, um, leaving some of the more smaller bird-like dinosaurs left. It was also at this time period that mammals truly started to evolve. Okay, So the Triassic, Jurassic extinction event is when mammals started to evolve. The earliest mammals were small rodent-like creatures, probably the size of small dogs, small cats, um, and they could fit into niches that were opened up by very large uh, organisms dying off. Um, so they sort of had their chance to radiate. Then we go a very long time without a mass extinction event. And if you notice, if you do the math on these, it's roughly every 75 to 50 years, there's a mass extinction event. Um, from the Triassic Jurassic extinction to the KPG, <laughs> it's a fun one, the Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction event, also known as the KT boundary. This is the one we talked about a lot in class, which was 66 million years ago. So you have a time span of about 150 million years. Um, this mass extinction was caused, we believe, by an asteroid and the after effects of that asteroid striking Earth. Uh, it was not a tremendously huge mass extinction, okay? It, it wiped out around 70% of the life on the planet, but the large majority of life that it did wipe out were the dinosaurs. The surviving animals were reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals, as well as insects. Um, dinosaurs were wiped from the face of the planet, one, from the impact of the asteroid, and two, from its after effects, how it changed the climate. Dinosaurs could not adapt to that new environment. They were too large, and smaller organisms were able to take over. Now, it's been around 66 million years. We have talked about this in class. We are currently in the middle of a mass extinction, and I just want to give you an idea of how many animals have gone extinct in the last uh, couple centuries. If we look at it by order, and I pull this up, Within the kingdom Animalia, by itself, okay, there are 777 animals that have gone extinct in the last century. Um, one of those is an annelid, okay, so one worm has gone extinct. Is that better? Um, 69 arthropods, so 69 insects have gone extinct. Eight of those were crustaceans. 391 chordates, so animals with a true backbone and nervous system have gone extinct. A hundred of those were ray finned fishes, okay, so uh, fish that have bones. 39 of them were amphibians. 138 of them were birds. There was one jawless fish that has gone extinct. 85 mammals have gone extinct. And 25 reptiles have gone extinct. In the order Mollusca, there have been 315 extinctions, 34 of which were what are called bivalves, which we'll talk about um, actually coming up in a couple weeks and 281 gastropods. Gastropods are organisms like nautili, squids, octopi, that kind of thing. Um, and then there was one species of flatworm that has gone extinct. In addition to animal life, there has been 128 members of the plantae kingdom that have gone extinct. That includes mosses, liverworts, ferns, algaes, um, and several uh, flowering plants. So quite a few extinctions. If you total it all up, it is sitting right at just under a thousand species have gone extinct um, in the last century. That's a big number. Now, you don't necessarily know what type of animals belong to those orders, so I'm going to go through and give you a list. It's very long. Uh, you don't have to take notes on this part. This is just kind of to let it sink in. But, as far as marsupials are concerned, the broad-faced potteroo, and bear with me, some of these are very fun to pronounce, the eastern hair wallaby, the lake mackay hair wallaby, the desert rat kangaroo, the thylacine, the tulac wallaby, the desert bandicoot, the lesser bilby, the pig-footed bandicoot, the crescent nail-tail wallaby, and the red-bellied gracile opossum have gone extinct. Sorry, I'm having lighting issues. Um, there is a group of organisms known as the Cyrenians, okay, that were completely wiped out in the late 1700s. These are known as Stellar's sea cow. They were hunted to extinction. 
Um, there are several species of rodents that have gone extinct. I'll give you just a list. The Oriente cave rat, the Torres cave rat, the Imposter hudia, the Montane hudia, uh, the Galapagos giant rat, the Canary almos, the Flores cave rat, the Verhuvian's giant tree rat, the Cuban coney, the Hisponian edible rat. Missed out on your chance to eat one of those. The Puerto Rican hudia, the big-eared hopping mouse, Darling's Downs hopping mouse, the white-footed rabbit rat, that's fun, um, the St. Lucie giant rat, the long-tailed hopping mouse, the Martin Q giant mouse, and about a hundred other species of mice have gone extinct. Um, as far as ungulates, ungulates are things like cattle and pigs. Uh, the Cebu warty pig has gone extinct. Um, in the family Legomorphs, which are rabbits, the Sardinarian pika and the Majorcan hare have gone extinct. Um, as far as proboscids are concerned, these are animals like elephants. The North African elephant has gone extinct. The Syrian elephant has gone extinct. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? About 12 species of bats have gone extinct. The Puerto Rican flower bat, the lesser masquerine flying fox, the Guam flying fox, the dusky flying fox, and a few others. Um, as far as carnivores are concerned, the Falcon Island Wolf, the Sea Mink, the Japanese Sea Lion, the Caribbean Monk Seal has gone extinct, the Atlas Bear, the Barbary Lion, the Hokkaido Wolf, the Honshu Wolf, the Cascade Mountains Wolf, the Bank Islands Wolf, the uh, Cape Lion, the Cape Serval, the Sardanian Lynx, the Formosan Clouded Leopard, the European Lion, the Bali Tiger, the Mexican Grizzly Bear, the Caspian Tiger, the Hoven Tiger, the Eastern Cougar, and the Japanese River Otter. There has been one species of primate to go extinct, the Koala Lemur. Uh, and that's all I'm going to go with. That was about two minutes of animals that have gone extinct in the last century, quite a bit. So, uh, mass extinction may seem like a very bad thing, um, but it is not, and we've talked about why. Mass extinctions give rise to new evolutionary species and new species get the opportunity to truly radiate and take over new niches that are left behind. It's sort of like a reset button for the planet when things maybe not necessarily get too out of hand, but when there are not enough niches available on the planet for the organisms there, something's got to give and a mass extinction will occur, whether it's due to a natural disaster that is random or due to climate change caused by those animals. Uh, we've had both in our history. So, I hope you got some good notes on that. I'm almost done. I don't want this one to go over 15 minutes. I apologize. Uh, I know this is kind of long, um, but I'm trying to get two videos squeezed into one here. So, let me talk about orientation real quick because you're going to need it this week for your dissection and for your dissections coming up. And for this, I'm going to use my good friend Sully here and talk about what orientation is. Um, when you do your lab reports for your dissections, you're going to have to give me proper terms of orientation when you do your dissections. You'll be taking pictures of your animals as you dissect them, and you'll have to label them after the fact um, and tell me what parts are what. So, we're going to start off with how do you tell what part of Sully is what part? All right, we can say towards the head, so his face right here is going to be known as superior cranial, sorry, superior cranially. Okay, so cranium, like the head, cranial, and superior, meaning it's on top. If we flip them over, Towards the bottom here, it is inferior and known as caudal. Caudal means tail. So inferior is bottom, caudal is tail. Superior is top, cranial means head. We can also have dorsal, which is the back. You've heard of dorsal fins in fish or whales, sharks, okay? It's because it's on their back. Flip him on his backside and rub his tummy a little bit. That is his ventral side. So your belly or the side that is closest to the ground is going to be ventral. Now. We have down the middle here, so his midline, all right, think of it running in between his eyes, down his nose. If he had abs, it would be the midline of his abs, okay? That's known as medial, and medial just means the middle. If we move out from the middle, okay, towards the end of his arms, that's lateral. So if you're moving away from the midline of the body, that's lateral, okay? Round his shoulder, somewhere in between medial and lateral is known as an intermediate area. So if you're dissecting a uh, organism that is bony and you're on their shoulder or their hip joint, it's known as an intermediate location. We can also have the term proximal, meaning you are close to the body trunk, so the proximal portion of the arm would be the shoulder. We can have distal, which is away from the body, 
So the fingertips would be distal. We also have two more. Superficial, which is your skin, and I'm not going to tear them open, but your insides and your organs are known as deep or internal. Okay, so let's run through it again real quick and then we're done. We have, starting at the very top, superior cranial. I have trouble saying that. Superior cranial, okay. Inferior and caudal. Dorsal, ventral, medial, intermediate, lateral, okay, proximal, you're close to the body is proximal, so his shoulder, his hip would be proximal, and distal is away from the body, all right? Skin, his nice pretty blue and purple fur, superficial, if he had any organs, they would be deep, okay? So take a minute, write those down. If you need to draw a picture or something to help you remember what they are, please do so. Um, you will not be quizzed on the orientation terms, but you do have to know them for your dissections. All right. Hope you all have a wonderful break if you do not watch this Thursday or Friday. And I will see you when school gets back.